ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News, often imitated but never replicated syntax news show for the week ending December 3rd, 2022. There's a lot to talk about this week. As usual, we have a plethora of headlines. Also, we have the cognitive conjecture section in which I take a look at a mysterious YouTube personality known as Daylit. And then we will have a interesting cultural contribution that you won't want to miss. And it is a musical one. So without further ado, let's get to the headlines. First headline comes from NPR Business. And it reads, Some rail workers say Biden turned his back on us in deal to avert rail strike. Now, first of all, I'd like to explain what it is exactly I'm doing here. You will see the yellow highlighted sections. Those are what is known as particles of negation, meaning they have a negative connotation. And how I credential this is I perform something called parse which just means I look up those particles in an etymology dictionary and go to the earliest nativity root meaning and find out whether it has a negative connotation or not. And if it does, then it's known as a particle of negation. And that could be because it literally means something negative or because it negates the now space, i.e. it's past tense, future tense. And then you see the red numbers on there. Those represent syntax values. And you can look at your upper starboard side corner of your screen, you will see a syntax key giving you closure to which part of speech the number represents. So we have a series of adjectives culminating in pronoun Biden. Then we have uh, quotation marks, which if you look in any plain, simple English fiction babble styles manual will tell you it's not on the page. It's not in and doesn't belong to what's going on. It's sort of the four corner rule where it's not on the page. It's in a different, it exists somewhere different than what's going on with the rest of the words that aren't in quotations. So therefore I haven't syntaxed that because it's not there. And this would uh, apply to you if you ever decide to study correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, and you decide to syntax and commandeer uh, a derelict vessel, a derelict grammatical vessel, which has a fictitious conveyance of grammar on it, and then you have to bank values on that paper and do forensics on it, this is something that you would use if you choose in that scenario. So then we pick up with in deal, which is adverb verb, and then to avert, which is adverb in the future tense, and an adjective, which is coloring rail into an adjective, culminating in a pronoun, strike. So I had heard rumors about this, about uh, some railroad um, strike that was going to happen before Christmas, which definitely wouldn't have done anything to strengthen or bolster the economy. It would have probably hurt it worse. Uh, so, it remains to be seen how this will all turn out. Next headline. A man who burned a cross to intimidate his black neighbors pleads guilty to hate crime. We have adverb verb, adverb verb in the past tense, adverb verb, adverb in the future tense, verb, adverb, adjective, 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 adjective adjective, 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 pronoun, and an adverb, future tense, adjective, pronoun. Now you notice, you have words like a, who, uh, to, his. Those words are all what I call non-tangible contract words. They're non-fact-based, they're non-tangible. We don't have a tangible contract with them the way that we have a tangible contract with man or burn, or neighbor, or the color black, or crime. Uh, and so those 
uh, words would either be meaning non-tangible contract words would either be adverbs verbs or pronouns just like tangible contract words would either be verbs adjectives or pronouns to flip it uh, non-tangible contract words will never be adjectives and tangible contract words will not be adverbs so someone who's burning a cross I have to guess is in his own front yard um, I know what the cross represents and if he's doing it to scare if that is his volition to scare his uh, black neighbors um, then yeah that that's not the right thing to do that's not correct as far as it being a hate crime I don't know I don't know the value of something is what you put into it so I suppose if that's how you feel about it then that's the what it will represent to you I highly recommend uh, checking out my video on racism uh, that I did a few months ago hopefully there will be a link in your upper starboard side corner of your screen you can go watch that um, it gives you my position on this type of what I can only describe as ridiculousness next headline comes from US News and World Report who pleased with China's easing of strict measures. The comments come after several major cities in China eased their local mitigation measures following protests over the country's zero strategy. So we have who, which quite literally, do we know what that is? I mean, of course we can assume that who should be or ought to be or is supposed to be an abbreviation for the World Health Organization but we don't know that because there are no periods in there it's just the word WHO in all caps so that's just a standalone pronoun pleased we have our dollar store quotations there with the apostrophes it's not on the page four corner rule as I explicated uh, a few minutes ago then we have adverb with modifying China into adjective which is coloring easing into a pronoun also containing the particle of negation modifier ing and then we have of which is an adverb with the vowel in front of a consonant particle of negation at the beginning of the word then we'll, that is modifying strict into an adjective which is coloring into an adjective which is then coloring measures into a pronoun Next, we have a little break in the continuance of the evidence. And then we start up again with adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun in the past tense with eased. And nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence. Or, as in this case, an adverb, which is coloring local into an adjective. And then we have another adjective and another adjective. Adjective, adjective, adjective. Pronoun over, followed by adverb the. Uh, country verb and then we have another one of those dollar store quotations with the apostrophes and the four quarter rule which isn't on the page therefore I have not syntax it culminating in a standalone pronoun strategy because it is flanked by breaks and the continuance of the evidence excessive spacing on the uh, port side and then the full stop on the starboard side yeah I was watching that this week uh, what was going on over there and that was that was just insane how they were just locking people in their houses and their apartments and would not let them out locking them basically just uh, well if you saw it you know what I'm talking about it's a very horrible situation next headline comes from Associated Press Indiana judge won't block probe over a 10 year olds so we have adjective pronoun adverb adjective pronoun adverb and then we have a compound adjective with 10 year olds culminating in a pronoun now this I read a little bit into this and this is a, a ridiculous situation uh, because this is obviously a 
a situation of physical uh, rape and I just have to say contract is by consent and no one else can tell you what you can or cannot do with your vessel it's not up to them it's only up to you and if it's a 10 year old then it's up to their parents or guardian it's not up to a judge or a government next headline comes from the hill three signs from today's jobs report that suggest inflation will stay high well to use a phrase uh, that one of my favorite youtubers uh, I don't know if he does it anymore I haven't really caught many of his video videos of late but uh, to quote Gregory Manorino duh adjective pronoun adverb adjective adjective pronoun adverb adjective 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 in the future tense adjective pronoun yes I agree I think that it will stay high and keep rising uh, the Federal Reserve is and will be the buyer and lender of last resort next headline comes from Fox Business Elon Musk gives Kanye West the boot from Twitter over offensive posts I tried my best Musk said Yee's tweets violated our rule against incitement to violence therefore suspending the rappers Twitter account now again I have not syntax the dollar store quotations because it falls under the four corner rule uh, by my knowledge and uh, I'm gonna say to this that what he's talking about it was I guess there was a tweet posted that had a star of David with a swastika superimposed in the center of it I guess and I've seen this before both symbols are are very ancient symbols uh, the swastika predates World War II by thousands of years according to history as a pagan symbol as far as I know but again as I say the value of something is what you put into it so if you think that that is an incitement to violence Elon Musk well then that tells us where your mind's at time for your weekly now space syntax lesson in which I will syntax this uh, on the fly I guarantee you I haven't looked at this already other than to just post it up into my cloud so that I could syntax it right here right now with you first thing I'm going to do is point out some particles of negation now US you know with the balance of honor and grace that's not a particle of negation because that's the name of a place so I'm not even gonna bother with that but I do see a vowel in front of a consonant here uh, I see a particle of negation here another particle of negation uh, not gonna bother with American because again it's a name and one of that another RE two is future tense not going to bother with fight immediately because that is in quotations so now we're ready to syntax so when I teach syntaxing I teach beginners to go backwards because it's the most efficient and accurate way to do it and the first thing you do is you look at a word and you ask yourself is it tangible contract or non-tangible contract and you go through and think about these things so I see tangible contract I see tangible contract is top tangible contract let's find out so we see here we have highest point old English summit crest tuft I've seen enough top is definitely tangible contract members is tangible contract NATO is tangible contract and the is non-tangible contract so the is an adverb modifying NATO into an adjective which is coloring members into an adjective which is coloring top into an adjective general into an adjective culminating into pronoun says 
and again fight immediately isn't there two is a non tangible contract pronoun in the future tense ready is tangible contract adjective now is non tangible contract adverb are is tangible contract pronoun forces is tangible contract adjective american is tangible contract adjective so commander is tangible contract pronoun lithuanian tangible contract adjective border is tangible contract pronoun russian is tangible contract adjective on is non tangible contract adverb ready is tangible contract pronoun combat adjective are adjective troops adjective and us adjective and i began saying this a couple years ago that the guy who's supposedly the ceo of the corporation of the past tense united states was going to get his corporation into some sort of fight with that corporation you see there I mean, you can have an opinion on it, just like I have an opinion on it. Uh, you know, you can mind your own business, because no one can mind your business like you, so mind your own business. Now it's time for some humor for the memes of the week. This is for all you... Uh, weather fanatics out there this one of course as you can see there's a little kitty cat with the face of Samuel L. Jackson there and this one isn't so much a meme but it is uh, it is funny it says before and after the excavation and restoration of the great ziggurat of Ur built approximately 4,000 years ago by King or Namu of the Neo-Sumerian Empire in dedication to the moon god Nana. Look at these walls, ladies and gentlemen. And then look at these walls. Look at this front. Look, look at the spacing here. Look at... Are we looking at the same structure? Or has there been a little bit of cosmetic surgery performed here? Here is your cognitive conjecture for the program. This one comes from a channel known as One Spawn Only. And this man named uh, Daylit. And I will say this, that the man does have some interesting content. Um... However, again, addressing the issue of racism, uh, this sort of plays into that as well. So let, let's see what he has to say here. And this is the thing with black people. Black people like roaches. We really don't all the way die because the earth is ours. So I... He said because the earth is theirs. So only they can claim ownership. Of Earth? <clears throat> if you look at the racism video that I posted a link to earlier, I go through all the etymology of it. And uh, I think I go into the Black's Law legal meaning of it as well. And that is basically when you give favoritism to one race over another. You give priority to one race over another. And that's exactly what this guy's doing right now. I think, I'm not gonna lie, like when I look at dirt, I'd be like, I think a nigga could come out of that if, if, if shit get too crazy and our population get too low, I think we could just morph from dirt. I know this sound like a wild conspiracy, but like, like, I, we the color of the ground. I don't, I don't think that's true. I think if I took some earth in my hand, some soil, and put it in his hand, I, I don't think it's the same color. I don't.
I mean, and I don't think I'm wrong. Like we the same color as the planet. So it got to have some type of like, because look, think about this, my nigga. I'm going to be honest. When you think about all the shit they doing to kill us, my nigga, how we still ain't like depleted to nothing yet. We got to have like another source of creation somewhere that it might be the La Brea tar pit. Hey, yo, what up the tar? Yo, hold on. Hold on, my nigga. What color is oil? Oil come out the planet. It's us. What if oil is like venom? What if like like a certain amount of what if they like what if they dig so much that they be cutting the back of a giant black nigga under the ground? Okay. That was one hell of a claim and I don't see any way to certify any of that so that's why that's this week's cognitive conjecture thank you Daylit for providing this week's content and finally we have our cultural contribution here and it's also coupled with some sad news in the passing of Fleetwood Mac's Christine McVie, who is 79 years old. You see here in front of you the classic lineup. What is thought of as the classic and most successful, definitely, lineup of Fleetwood Mac. You have, uh, starting from left to right, we have John McVie. We have Christine McVie. We have Mick Fleetwood. We have Lindsey Buckingham. And we have Stevie Nicks. And they put out at least three of the all-time greatest legendary records ever. The self-titled Fleetwood Mac, The Rumors, and Tango in the Night. Oh, and also Tusk. So that make that four. But definitely Rumors there. Um, a lot of what went on there was uh, the songs were inspired by the tensions between the McVees and Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks. And also, uh, Mick Fleetwood, who, <laughs> well, it was quite a, uh, I guess you could call it sort of maybe an, an incestuous band, so to speak. Um, sort of like in a Targaryen sense. Um, but some of the best rock and roll, you know, pop, rock, great production from Lindsey Buckingham. One of the greatest rhythm, rock and roll, unique rhythm sections of all time. Mick Fleetwood love his drumming great drummer and John McVie great bass player great rhythm section no doubt uh, Lindsey Buckingham one of my favorite guitar players he, he's one of the few guitar players that has a finger picking style that you can pretty much tell who he is when you hear uh, the notes on his that he's playing and as well Christine McVie has a very unique like a rich soulful voice and she's just as different from Stevie Nicks, who has also the same type of, not the same type of voice, but the same type of voice in the sense that it's easily recognizable. When either one of those women open their mouths, you know who's singing. That's how unique it is. So we see here that uh, she was born 1943. Her real name, correct name, legal name, Christine Ann Perfect. And, uh, she wrote a majority of, she either wrote or co-wrote co -wrote a majority of Fleetwood Mac's most successful and popular songs. Little Lies, Love in Store, Oh Daddy, uh, Over My Head, Save Me, Say You Love Me, Songbird, Think About Me, Warm Ways, World Turning, You Make Love and Fun. Uh, I think she also wrote, or co-wrote, I'm So Afraid. But yeah, she, what a catalog of, of great songs, what a great pop songwriter uh, she was. Great keyboardist and soulful vocalist, and uh, definitely uh, the music industry. Uh, I didn't want to say that. Not music industry. I mean, the music community 
will definitely feel a loss. The music industry won't. The music industry will probably... Pow, sales will go up now that she's passed. Uh, so that was a misspeaking on my behalf. I apologize. And condolences go out to Christine McVie and her family and uh, all her friends. And inner circle. Well, that wraps up this week's edition. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments field. If you feel squirrely and want to get serious about your correct sentence structure studies, contact me at the email address that's been at the bottom of your screen for the whole video. I'll set up a 10 to 50 minute video consultation. You can ask me anything you want to. Just shoot me an email. There are also memberships. You can click the join button and find out about that. If you click tier two, you will get exclusive content every week, uh, most every week, that not, that's not available to the public. Or if you like free stuff, there are almost 500 free videos on this channel for you to study. The sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge, as far as I know, no one, not one single individual on earth has a YouTube channel like this one. So I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you watching. And I will see you next week. Take care.